All right, so today we're back with another test on the heat pump versus AC. So we got the heat pump in the Model Y, 2020 Model Y, and we have the AC in the 2019 Model 3 Standard Range Plus. So it is an older Model 3. It is actually over 30,000 miles on that, and we have around 9,000 miles on the Model Y. So both of them have plenty of miles on them, but today it was cold at least for Georgia, it is below freezing, around 29 degrees, 28 degrees when we did this test. And for an hour, I am running both at 70 degrees on the heat. So we can see how much energy each one uses for an hour of heating the car in 29 degree weather. So we're gonna see which one is more efficient with heating the car or keeping it warm and then we will crunch the numbers and see which one is better. It should be the Model Y, should be more efficient. Even though it is a larger vehicle, it does have the heat pump. The heat pump is supposed to be more efficient at heating the car, especially than the resistive heating over there in the Model 3. So that is going to be hopefully a big difference, but we will see what the difference is all right, so I did just pull both cars out here in the driveway. We've got the Model 3 here with AC, and we've got the Model Y with the heat pump. Both have been running now for about 45 minutes, and uh, right off the bat, I can tell that the Model Y is louder. Nice little leaf there. So hard to tell maybe from this video, but the Model 3 is a lot quieter, keeping it warm than the Model Y. I guess the heat pump is louder, even though I did check in the Model Y and we do have the actual insulating shroud around the heat pump. So that should be helping with reducing the noise, but it is a little bit louder. So we have both cars set at 70 degrees for one hour. We're gonna check and see how many uh, watt hours or how many miles it uses. So miles of range, obviously bigger percentage of the battery in the Model 3 by default, even if they were the same efficiency. But we're gonna take the overall uh, miles and percentage that is used in each for this hour and then we're gonna calculate how many uh, watt hours of energy that actually was used to keep the car at 70 degrees for one hour. Hey, so you may notice that it is a little bit later. In fact, it's a few days later. It's been uh, taking me a while to get back to uh, crunching the numbers on this test, but I did complete the test of the Model Y heat pump versus the resistive heating element in the Model 3. And it came back with some uh, pretty interesting numbers. I think the Model Y is definitely more efficient, spoiler alert, but I wanted to go through the exact numbers. So just keep in mind that this test is from no heating and up to the 70 degrees. So both cars had to go from basically 30 degrees outside, 28 degrees outside, up to the 70 degree temperature. So this represents basically the ramp up of the heating. So that's definitely gonna be less efficient than if you're just maintaining the 70 degrees uh, throughout the hour. So definitely a lot more energy is gonna be spent in this type of test. Then we will probably do some additional tests in the future, just a steady state, like basically keep it 70 degrees test uh, for an hour versus the ramp up test, as well as I would like to see how long it actually takes for each car to get up to the set temperature. That is something that is, uh, I think a little bit interesting because I would like to see if the heat pump is able to actually warm the car as quickly or get it up to temperature as quickly as the resistive heating in the Model 3. That is actually somewhere that the Model 3 might be able to excel at they might be able to basically get up to temperature quicker and then overall use more temperature or more energy uh, ongoing. So let's get to the numbers real quick and see how it did. All right, so you can see here, I did this test on the 1st of December and it was 28 degrees out. 
the temperature that we wanted to get it to was 70 degrees. So that was for both cars. We had it set to 70 degrees and we did it for an hour. So I did two different uh, ways of calculating the energy spent or used to keep the cars at 70 degrees for an hour. Uh, one was based on the percentage. So this is just what the car actually tells me is the percentage level, which is not nearly as accurate as the miles. So the miles are actually obviously a, a little bit more uh, detailed or finite number to deal with as far as what is being used. So these are the rated miles. And let's just go through the, the percentage real quick. So the Model Y started at 80% and ended at 75%, and the Model 3 started at 73% and ended at 63%. So it's 5% versus 10%, which is not a super relevant number because the percent of a Model 3 battery pack standard range is uh, much less. So overall, the Model 3 standard range is 54 kilowatt hours battery pack usable versus the Model Y that we have is 72.5 kilowatt hours. So that is obviously a large difference in the actual size of the pack, which obviously would be directly proportional to the percentage uh, difference there. So that is um, not gonna be a super relevant number. So you have to back into the actual kilowatt hours used or usable versus the range that is expected for that uh, amount of energy in each car. And so that is the rated range. So essentially in the Model Y, the 72.5 kilowatt hours should get you 326 miles rated range. And the 54 kilowatt hours in the Model 3 should get you 240 miles rated range. Of course, I did go ahead and put in here what my actual range is at the 100% mark for both cars. It is significantly less than what is set as the rated range, but nevertheless, the numbers that we can back into are based on the rated range. And so we used in the Model Y uh, 3.42 kilowatt hours, and in the Model 3, 4.97 kilowatt hours. This is based on the percentage. And again, this is not a very uh, direct or detailed number. It's not very finite uh, because it, you know, it's probably started at like say 79.6% and ended up at, you know, 74.8%, who knows? So that's why it's not gonna be nearly as uh, exact as the miles. So. All of these numbers that I was actually able to get uh, from Teslify because in the car it would just say 246 miles starting in the Model Y here, for example, and then 232 most likely in the, uh, the Model Y ending. So we were able to, from Teslify, to get the exact numbers to the hundredth. So 245.68 miles starting down to 231.67 miles ending. So a total use of 14.01 miles. And based on the rated range, 14 miles of rated range used or lost during the test, that equates to 3.1157 kilowatt hours. And that's a lot of range. And again, I think this is mostly uh, dependent on the fact that it had to go from 30 degrees up to 70 degrees. So a lot of energy was probably spent just getting it up to the temperature. And then it probably used a lot less energy on going. So this isn't necessarily representative to uh, how many miles you would lose per hour if you were, say, driving for five hours straight. You would not lose that many miles each hour you would probably lose less. And again, I wanna do a test later on to determine what that actually number would be for basically keeping it at that temperature versus the ramp up time frame. So, but you can see for the Model 3, 21.04 uh, miles of rated range. And that equates to, based on the kilowatt hours that are available in the Model 3 pack, 4.734 
kilowatt hours used. So you can see that the Model 3 actually used 50, over 50% 50 more energy uh, in order to change the temperature from 30 degrees to 70 degrees over the course of that hour versus the Model Y. So that is uh, a huge difference. So it actually used, the Model 3 actually used 1.61 kilowatt hours more uh, to do the same thing that the Model Y did. So the heat pump is definitely a lot more efficient for heating the car. We did do some tests in uh, the hot temperatures, but it obviously not much difference there uh, between an air conditioning in the Model 3 and the heat pump for heating uh, and cooling in the Model Y. So really you see all of your gains or most of your gains in the actual <laughs> colder climates, which we don't actually get a whole lot of here in Georgia. But I tell you what, there, is been, there has been a couple times when it was definitely a big deal to have that extra range when it was significantly colder. Uh, say when it was below freezing, you know, you do see a definite impact to the range on the Model 3, especially using the heat. You, you gain some from uh, not using the heat and maybe using your seat heaters instead, but you still it's still got to warm up the battery pack too. So there's also some efficiency lost just from the battery pack. So this is these numbers represent just the amount of energy used to actually control the climate in the vehicle. So just based on that, so basically you're just leaving it, say you're leaving it in the parking lot, you wanna keep it that temperature, or you wanna warm it up before you go into work or whatever it may be. Um, you're using for the 40 degree temperature difference that we needed to get to in the first hour, we used over three kilowatt hours in the Model Y and over 4.7 kilowatt hours in the Model 3. So overall, I thought it was an interesting test. And like I said, I'm gonna do some other tests with the, the Model 3 and Model Y comparing the heat pump efficiency and see what it is when you have it already up to temperature maybe for an hour, as well as, again, I wanna see how long it takes for it to get up to the temperature that you set, because that is, you know, maybe, on, in most uh, occasions, that's probably what you're worried about the most, honestly, is because you're gonna be leaving somewhere and you want to get it warmed uh, as quickly as you can. That's really the most common uh, scenario, but, the amount of energy that the Model Y uses being so much significantly less than the, again, older Model 3 that we have is definitely going to have an impact on long range trips uh, or travel when it's in cold climate. So that's definitely a huge difference and an advantage. And in fact, actually, if you get the Model 3 now, the so-called 2021, they don't really have model years. Um, but the newer Model 3s that are being produced now do have the heat pump and they actually have the double pane glass. Uh, so the, the double pane glass also is going to insulate the heat a lot better as well as it's supposed to help with the road noise. So you got some advantages there with the new Model 3 and its efficiency is probably incredible as compared to our Model 3 uh, just from a, you know, a year ago old. So... That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps others find it and subscribe if you're not already. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.